Hey guys, what's going on? Massive Beats here. Today we're going to check out how the UF8 and the UC1 from SSL work with Ableton and if track selection is as easy as in, let's say, uh, Logic Pro. So uh, the best thing is to first take an instance of the SSL2 channel strip and put it on each track here. And then we're going to select uh, with the UF8 um, each track and see if uh, it follows suit. Uh, how the behavior is. Let's try to do that. And so if I press select, there is no problem selecting this. And that is just being the UF8 being a controller, a controller surface. And so now if I go over to the UC1, when I select my track here, uh, that works in the plugin mixer. But conversely, if I select tracks in the UF8, on the UF8, the UC1 does not follow suit. So you can be totally working away in the UF8, jumping around, but the UC1 stays stuck to that one channel. Well, that can actually be a benefit as well, because you can then keep that locked on channel one and do something with other channels on the UF8 and control other third-party plugins across the board with it. You know, a side thought, I just couldn't do it, and I tried to look in the settings of the SSL software to do it. And in Ableton, I couldn't change it. Maybe you have an idea uh, to change it, but in Logic, that is easier. You would insert it on the first uh, plugin instance and it would completely follow back and forth UC1 and UF8. Not so in Ableton, but there is a workaround. I'm gonna get to that uh, just in one second. Hang with me and it's actually pretty cool and maybe the best way of using uh, the UF8 and, UF8 and the UC1 together. All right, so a little side note, the UF8 can control third-party plugins very, very well. And usually on the first page already, you get the main parameters if you switch it in plugin mode. So in here, in this case, the Klanghelm, this free Klanghelm compressor and all the important controls are easily uh, usable, turnable, touchable with the UF8. So that is also one of the important reasons why to work with um, the UF8. Anyways, so now let me get to what I said is really the key takeaway here um, to really dig into the SSL ecosystem. All right, guys, so what's that other option of doing is So it is to run a layer in UF8 called the plugin mixer. The plugin mixer, we can always pull that up with the 360 uh, no, button that we have on the UC1 and the UF8. Uh, basically running multiple instances of SSL channel strip 2 and reporting back into Ableton. But putting it on a layer switches from Ableton mode into channel strip mode, pure plugin mixer mode. So how is this working? So here we got UF8 on right, UC1 on the left, and C by just on my third layer, in this case is a plugin mixer, can be any of them, just tapping immediately selects the correct channel in the plugin mixer. I can just call it console. And UC1, yes, follows suit. It does exactly, follows everything. So, and the opposite is true as well. You move around on the UC1, the UF8 follows. And you touch a parameter on the UC1, that parameter gets called up on the screens of the UF8. So you're sort of uh, still in Ableton because all these are, uh, instances of the plugin running in Ableton, but the representation is basically like a mixer, an SSL console, an SSL 9000 console with an EQ if you want to switch it. So I hope this makes sense. And, you know, the UF8 really becomes a very good UC1 replacement in a way, because in this example here, I got the comp compressor ratio on. If you want to do something else, you can always switch back uh, on the, with the layer button back to just controlling Ableton. So the faders and the panning in Ableton and what else not, or controlling other plugins. But for purely working with the SSL uh, ecosystem, this is a pretty good workaround and maybe the best way of doing it because it really keeps you focused. Thank you very much uh, for hanging with me. Please like and subscribe. Have fun.